What is the best rocket motor for this kit? Well, when you go to the Apogee website and you scroll down on our website and you get to the recommended motors, you'll notice that these charts are really long. And people always ask us, from that list, which is the best motor for this rocket? That's what I'm going to cover in this video. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, my name is Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today, I want to cover picking the best motor for your rocket. Now, the word best is it's not in my dictionary. In my dictionary, I call it the optimum motor. But a lot of people try to say the best one, like there's one. When you talk about optimum, there's multiple ones that you can choose from. Um, so that's what I'm going to cover here, the optimum one. Now I'm going to give you the answer real quick right up front, and then I'm going to explain how I come about this optimum answer. So if you go to the Apogee website and you come to the motor chart, um, along the top are all the different um, variables that we use ourselves to pick motors. Uh, the first column is the motor type, um, then the manufacturer and what kind of motor it is, whether it's single use or reloadable, um, the color of the flame you see here on this column. Um, and then you have comments and altitude and the delay time and price because those are the things that are important to people. So when you go to this list what I want you to do is to click on the altitude column and sort it by altitude. You, if you click on it multiple times it'll go highest to lowest but we want to go from lowest the lowest altitude up to the highest altitude. Uh, when, I, when I do that I want to usually pick like the second or third motor on that list. I don't want to pick the lowest altitude because oftentimes it's just enough to get the rocket up in the air and it's just not impressive. But if you go too high, then you risk the rocket going so high that you're going to lose it. So I try to get like maybe two or three motors in there. In this particular case on this rocket, for my first flight, I would probably use the D-12-5 and that's this Sky Torpedo rocket kit. So that's the easy answer. Now, do you want to know why I chose that? Okay, so first off, over here on the side, I have a variety of rocket motors. Um, I have some single-use Estes motors. I've got a, a C-11 and a D-12, and here's an E-12. Uh, these will all fit in here. You know, you can take the C-11-3 and turn the rocket around. You can just slide it in just fine. Um, the same with the D-12. Um, but sometimes uh, you can get a longer motor. You can see these, these motors are getting really long and you can see here's, here's an even longer one. This is a reload. But there's actually one low motor that's about that long. It's a six grain Cesaroni motor. It's the same diameter and it will fit into this rocket. But the problem with this particular rocket, it's got an engine hook and an engine block in it. So if you were building a rocket from scratch and you know you wanted to go with bigger motors in the future, leave that engine hook out and leave the engine block out. That way you can slide in motors that are longer and they'll go in further. Uh, because this one sticks out so far, I would probably lean against using it. Uh, but it will be on the list of motors on the Apogee website because if you do leave it out, you can stick this motor in here and you, you can get a really good flight with it. So these are single use motors. Um, and that's this column over here. Um, you can see um, the C11, which was this one right here. That is a single use motor. So that means you use it once, and then after you use it, it gets tossed away. Uh, the nice thing about single use motors is you don't have to worry about anything. Um, they're easy to ignite, um, and if you lose your rocket, like you hang it into a tree on its parachute, you don't have to worry about the expense of it. Um, with reload casings, um, there is the expensive case you have to worry about. So that's one of the considerations you might take into account. 
And that's why they're listed on our website, single use versus reloadable. Um, now when they're reload, as you can see here on this list, um, it tells you what rocket motor casing they go into. Uh, this particular one, the E28-4, says on the list a 2440. So that's the casing size. And if you look here on the side of the casing, it says 2440. So that's the casing size. The 24 means it's 24 millimeters in diameter, and the 40 means it's kind of like the measure of how big the gas tank is. It's 40 newton seconds of power. So that's what that 2440 means. There's also a 2460 motor, um, which is actually a little bit longer because it's got like a bigger tank on it. Um, but this is the 2440. Um, and then the next thing you might want to consider, well, here, let me go back. When I'm picking motors uh, for people, I always ask them, what is your mission? Um, because mission is very important. Um, and if you go back to the Apogee website, here on the top of our website, it says, your success is our mission. So I need to know what your mission is so that I can help you achieve that. Now, most people don't really have a mission. You know, it's like, oh, I got this cool rocket. I want to go out and fly it. Well, what's your mission? Well, if you don't have a mission, there's usually just three. To go fast, to go low, and we already covered going low, picking the, the lowest altitude motor, or you could pick the highest altitude motor. So those are the three missions that people typically choose one, one of those three missions. Now, if you have another rocket like a helicopter recovery or a glider recovery, your mission might be different. And I really encourage you to try those other rockets because then you can get into really cool missions. But, you know, it all comes back to how high do you want to go or how fast you want to go. Um, one of the things that, I, that we don't say is how, how slow you want to go because speed is important for rocket safety because a rocket that goes too slow is going to be unstable. You don't know where it's going to go. So all the motors that you see on our website are safe motors. They, go, they get to a high enough speed where they're going to be safe. So if you want to go slow, you know, I, there's a minimum speed. I'm, going to, I'm, I'm not going to let you go slower than that when I'm recommending a motor. Now you can do what you want on your own motors, but if you come to me, there's a minimum speed, and that speed is 30 miles an hour as it leaves the launch rod. Anything slower than that, the rocket's going to be wavering around and, and a gust of wind could hit it and it could go sideways. And we don't want that. We want to be safe. Okay, so now, um, so going high is easy. It's just pretty much a bigger motor. Um, and you can get reload motors. Or th this is a single-use composite motor. Um, so if you go here on the list, this is an F44 motor. And... I'm sure this is probably on the list right here, the F44-8. Um, and these motors are designed to go into the motor mount. Um, it, the hook just clips over the back end and you don't have to do anything as long as it's as the middle part of the rocket motor is the same length as the Estes motor, it'll go in. Um, now there's longer ones like this one right here. Now this is going to hang out the back again like this long one over here. Um, so that you'd probably not use that unless you go with um, taking the engine block out and the engine hook out. Okay, the next thing on the list that you might want to choose is flame color. Um, this is an alternate mission. So if the rocket's flying to about the altitude you want um, and it's got the good speed that you need for a safe flight, the next thing you might want to choose is flame color. And um, there's, a, there's a variety of flame colors. There's a blue flame, there's a white flame, there's a big black sooty flame. Um, it's called Black Jack or Black Max. Um, it doesn't really affect the flight of the rocket. It just enhances the visibility of the rocket and, or how people perceive the rocket. So it's not that important. Um, but it is cool, like if you're, if you're doing photography, sometimes you might want a different flame color to, to make the, the, you know, whatever photograph you take more dramatic. Um, 
some motors that are reload motors are restricted, we're restricted to, to verify that the user is 18 years old or older or having a parent that's available with them watching things. And the reason for that is because this is a reload kit. Uh, this is actually three motors in here. So three of these, uh, you could fly this, you know, this casing three times and use all these parts up. Um, the, the advantage of a reload is over time, they're cheaper because the expensive part, is you're reusing every part time and that's the casing. And then you're just consuming the paper and all these other little items that are pretty relatively inexpensive. But the disadvantage of a reload motor is you have to assemble it. Um, it's going to take you maybe like five minutes before the flight of the rocket to put everything together and put it into the casing and get it into the air. Uh, for that reason, um, when a new person new to rocketry comes to me and asks me what motor they, can, they should use, I'm not going to direct them to a reload kit. I'm going to say go with a single-use motor because it's just easier. You, don't, you have enough to worry about. Let's just make sure that the rocket gets in the air and you have fun and you get it back. Um, but if you're using a reload motor, you have to be 18. And that's why this column is in here and it says restricted to 18 years or older. Um, in the bigger motors, uh, when you get to H motors and greater, not only you have to be 18, but you also have to be level one certified or going after your level one certification. Um, and that's a different program, uh, but it will be notated on our website right here. Uh, we already covered the altitude column on the website. Um, this gives you an idea how high the rocket's going to go. Um, in general, you want your launch field big enough to handle however high your rocket's going to go. Um, the higher it's going to go, the further the rocket is probably going to drift, and so that's going to make recovery a little bit harder if, it's, if it goes really high. So that's why we want to know how high it's going to go. Uh, the delay. Um, you'll notice on the delays, some of them have an actual number, some of them say C motor. Um, and when it says C motor, it's usually a single use motor where the delay is fixed. Like on this motor right here, it's fixed at three seconds. Uh, this one right here is also fixed at three seconds, which is the last number after the dash. Um, this one. The number after the dash is eight, so it's an eight-second delay. Um, if it doesn't have, if it has a number there, typically, especially in the larger motors, they're reloadable motors, which means in, in reload motors, you adjust the delay, um, and there's a special tool to adjust the delay. Um, this is the one for Aerotech. Aerotech actually has two of them, and I did a separate video on the delay adjustments on Aerotech motors and this one is the one for the Cesaroni motors and these are for reload motors. Adjusting the delay is um, it's useful because it allows us to sell just one motor. Um, you know you can have a, a D12-3, a D12-5 um, and it makes us here at the, our factory carry all these extra motors but when you get into reload motors like here, this is an E22 from Cesaroni, and it has a 13 second delay, but it's an adjustable, so I can have any delay I want under 13 seconds. There's typically the lowest you can go, but the highest you can go for this one is 13 seconds. So I can go 13, 11, 9, 7, you get the picture, you can adjust it. Um, and so that's where why we list the delay that you'd adjust it two when you have this motor chart. And then finally we have price because price is important and you want to know how much it's going to cost to fly your rocket. And, and it will also tell you how many motors you get in a package for that price. For this one here, the E28-4, it's a reload. We can tell it's a reload because it's a 2440. That tells us the casing size. It doesn't say single use. Um, and then it tells us how many motors are in that package. And, It'd be like this. There would be three motors in the reload package, uh, so you can get a you can get an estimate. So you just divide it by three, and that's typically about ten dollars per flight, and that's in two thousand and twenty dollars. If you're watching this video in the future, it's probably going to be a little bit higher because of inflation.
And then the final thing is, is the motor available? And some motors, uh, due to our stock levels, are sold out. Um, and so that will be notated on our website. Our website, we always update our, our quantities at least twice a day so that they're always accurate. Um, because we don't want to have two people ordering the same motor, the first one gets it and the second one does it. So as soon as the first person orders it and we sell out, it turns it off on our website and this is automatic um, so that the second person can order it. So the website, you don't need to call us and ask us, do you have this in stock? Well, if it says it add to cart, we have it in stock. And if it's sold out, there'll be that uh, notation here on the website as well. So the simple answer for picking motors, as I said, is pick one that's going to go, you're going to base it off of altitude, and it's typically not the lowest one, but maybe one or two below that. Uh, it'll give you a good flight, um, and I, I recommend single use if you're a beginner, because um, they're easier to prep. You don't have to worry about adjusting the delay, putting everything together, and making sure all the parts are in the right order. That stuff is a really fun to do. Um, when you get more involved, you get a little bit more experience, I highly recommend it. Doing reloads is great. Uh, single use is good for single, you know, quick motor, quick flights, uh, but you're gonna, it's a little bit more expensive. But if you're a beginner, it's definitely worth it. So that was a lot to cover. Uh, my name is Tim Van Milligan. You're watching the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, may all your rockets fly straight and true.